we're in the cold. Um, we're okay. Yeah. So the climate crisis is at our doorstep. Our country is flooding in the west, flooding in the east. It's burning in the west. It's baking in the south. Everywhere we look, the disasters are fueled by climate change and are uprooting families and claiming thousands of lives. When hurricanes strike, it's black and brown and working class communities that are hit the worst and are the last to get power or to be rebuilt. When temperatures soar, it's farm workers in the fields, construction workers who die of heat stroke. We don't have a minute to lose. Scientists say we only have six years left to cut U.S. carbon emissions in half to stop catastrophic climate change. We need an all-out mobilization of our government to create green union jobs and end the era of fossil fuels. Woo! The good news is, some in the past few years, we have an actual shot of doing that. The Inflation Reduction Act was the biggest climate bill in U.S. history. President Biden's American Climate Corps, which is modeled after Sunrise's Civilian Climate Corps, will create 2,000 green union jobs in the first year building the Green New Deal. But the bad news is Biden and many politicians are taking, are, who are talking the climate talk are also letting fossil fuel industry run wild. Under Biden's leadership, the United States is extracting more oil and gas than ever before and more than any other country. And then Republican politicians like Trump aren't even coy about the fact they're not even hiding that their party is functionally a death cult set on helping make the campaign go make their campaign donors more money at the expense of millions of lives across the world. New fossil fuel developments threaten to undo the gains we fought for. Biden has approved new oil, gas, oil and gas projects like the Willow Project that will sacrifice indigenous communities so oil executives can bring home a bigger paycheck. There are dozens more on the docket. Fracked gas companies are seeking federal approval federal approval of dozens of natural gas export facilities that would produce the equivalent of 675 coal-fired power plants. As a result, the United States is on track to reduce more fossil fuels than ever by 2030. That's bullshit. That's why we're here today. Our generation deserves a president who funds climate action, not genocide. This President's Day, dozens of Sunrise Movement hubs across the Pubs and chapters across the nation are rallying and taking action. We're mobilizing across the country, demanding Joe Biden be the president that we deserve. Sunrise Movement is mobilizing young people from San Diego to Boise to Phoenix to Chicago to Kansas City to Miami to Philadelphia to right here in Burlington, Vermont. We demand that President Biden declare a climate emergency and go all out to stop the climate crisis. Biden can't build renewables on Monday approve fossil fuel projects on Tuesday and claim to be a climate president, while at the same time funding bombs that are killing innocent Palestinians in Gaza. That's not how science works, and the young people know it. There are dozens of actions Biden can take today that don't require Congress to do anything and would save countless lives. He needs to use the same emergency powers that President Roosevelt used during World War II, or that both Trump and Biden use themselves in response to COVID to ensure that we are doing everything we can to confront the greatest crisis of our time. President Biden has a choice. Does he want to be remembered as a one-term president who was afraid to stand up to fossil fuel initiatives? Or does he want does he want to want, does he want the explosion of oil and gas development he oversaw to undo the progress made by the Inflation Reduction Act under the American Climate Corps? Or does he want to be remembered as the president who heeded the call of young people, of the working class, of the people of color on the front lines of the climate crisis, he can, and finally closed out the fossil fuel era and set us on the path to a, a prosperous economy and a viable future? We demand President Biden declare a climate emergency, ensure that Americans have green union jobs, our communities are prepared for climate disasters, and the Biden will end the era of fossil fuels and stop the climate crisis once and for all. Thank you for inviting me. I am extremely proud of you because any change will happen if the question of stopping genocide or for our environment, only young people can make the change. If you read the history, they are your generation is the generation made 
the difference and now we're looking up for you to do that. My name is Wafi, I'm a member of the Coalition for Palestinian Liberation and member of Bermona for Justice in Palestine. For years, I will tell you, we tried to contact 350 Vermont to connect the struggle for the environment and the colonization of Palestine and occupation of Palestine, stealing land, uprooting trees, stealing water from the Palestinians and put them in concentration camp like Gaza was important for us, but wasn't important for the early environmentalists here in Vermont, thinking anyway, everybody will be flooded while we are looking for liberation of people like Palestine. Now we are waking up. We are waking up and we can see that the struggle for the Palestinian liberation, no difference than the struggle for your future for your environment. Look at Israel what does in Palestine when it comes to environment, when they are digging on the Mediterranean Sea for gas and for oil. And now part of it, if they succeeded to occupy Palestinian Gaza, Gaza is sitting in oil. This is one of the reasons. And for that, I would love you to see that the connection between the struggle for environment or the racial and social struggle, black and brown people, and the labor coming from the South, our migrants, or our indigenous people who save this land and we are ex ex exploiting this land. I'll say to you, our future in your hand, the end of genocide in Palestine and those billions of dollars that your government, the U.S. government, are sending it as a death to my people is in your hand. As American, you have responsibility. But seeing you standing on this cold water, I have hope. And for that, Thank you very much. The most recent National Defense Authorization Act sent $886 billion to our military. The most recent climate piece of climate legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act, which was in 2022-2021, sent $391 billion compared to the $886 billion in the National Defense Authorization Act. Biden's authorized annual military spend is 23 times the annual investment of the Historic Inflation Reduction Act. We will spend more, in one year, we will spend more on our military than we'll spend over 10 years for climate, let alone other social services. Right now, President Biden is not being the president we deserve as a generation. And our movement is stronger than ever, united in anger because we know that we deserve someone who will actually fight for our future. Is that right? Yeah. We deserve a president who will end the era of fossil fuels once and for all. Is that right? Yeah. Well, this, we deserve a president who will fund our communities, invest in black and, bla black and brown and working class communities, prepare us for climate disasters. We need a president who is working for our future. And right now, we don't see that. Hi everyone, I would like to start by thanking you again on behalf of Sunrise for coming and supporting us today. It truly does make all the difference. To see all of these passionate and love-filled faces today brings me so much hope and I do not say this lightly. We live in a world in which hope often feels unattainable and holding on to it near impossible especially as a young person. Facing this crisis every day is exhausting. To look out my window each morning and see flooded fields instead of the winter wonderland of my childhood is soul crushing. The stream of dooming statistics, a constant reminder of the future slipping away from me and my peers. It is a weight too significant for any one person to carry. The good news is, I don't have to. 
none of us do. Each person here today is a channel for hope. Each and every one of us has decided to take advantage of the ability we have to bring light into this world. Light that carries us across generations, across movements, and across political parties, across our planet. I urge you all to leave us today with one goal in mind. Keep shining. Let us be persistent. Let us be the light through the windows in the places our leadership resides. Let us be the reminder of the responsibility they hold. Let us be the hope. We're all standing out here in the cold, but we're joined by thousands of other Sunrisers across the country and a, and a bunch of other climate organizations across the world. We are all angry and we're all upset that the leaders in power do not hold climate as a priority. We're not acting fast enough, and before we know it, our world will, not, will be thousands of times more different than the way we know it. You know what I mean. I guess I want to tell you a story. Um, my family's from the Philippines, and I remember when I was a kid, I would go on nightly Skype calls, and I would tell my, um, tell my family in the Philippines all about my day and about my um, life, just as friends would, just as neighbors would. Despite being thousands of miles apart, we would tell each other, you know, we love each other. Um, I remember one night there was, we, my, both my parents were huddled around a laptop and I thought it was just like another Skype call. Turns out um, they were watching news broadcast. Um, in 2014, Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines. It was the worst typhoon that has ever hit. Nothing has happened like that before. Thousands of communities were destroyed. Um, there wasn't power for months. Um, my mother, my mother's house lost all their belongings. My father's house, um, her, his childhood home was flooded all the way to the first floor. My name is Audrey Warren. And I'm here today with Sunrise Champlain Valley in support of climate action. If I lisp, it's because my lips I can't feel. Vermont is changing. This isn't news to us who live here full time, and this doesn't come as a shocker to anyone in the world right now. 2023 was hard enough a year for Vermont, from the catastrophic flooding in July that made national headlines, to the blue algae that threatens the species in Lake Champlain. Vermont is facing climate change in full force. In the last century, Vermont's average temperature has risen, risen by a full two degrees in the summer and a whole 4.5 degrees in the winter. Now this doesn't sound like much, but this is detrimental to our state's economy and ecosystems. The rise, this rise in temperature could mean annual floods, similar to the ones that we had this summer. Thousands of Vermonters lost their homes, businesses, and schools. Many became homeless as a result, and lives were destroyed. We don't want this. Our state cannot handle the outcomes of the events time and time again. The recovery efforts from July are still happening as I speak, as right now. We were the headline of the news for two weeks before we were forgotten. Before our state was just another past trend in the media. Roughly 14,000 Vermonters as a result applied for FEMA in hopes that they could rebuild what they had lost. And again, we were let down. 14,000 Vermonters applied. There were 14,000 applications for FEMA. Only 6,300 were approved. The other 7,000, well, they were denied or it was never followed through. FEMA could change the lives of so many, could lift people up from the destruction, destruction climate change has caused. On another note, Vermont relies on our ecosystems, the tourism, agriculture, and recreational benefits that our state offers us. In the next 10 years, we could lose over 70% of Vermont's annual income. This could mean the loss of skiing, fresh produce from local farms, and maple syrup would become a delicacy for only the wealthiest of families in Vermont. I mean, this year alone, we have experienced the cloudiest, wettest, and warmest winter since the 1950s. It is so hard to sit here as today's youth and let this happen. We cannot sit here and wait for something to be done or change to appear. 
We are the change. Us as a community. We are the change that we are so desperately waiting for. Yeah. There are answers for us. We could use the grass clippings from your lawnmower and produce it into ethanol for our vehicles. The blue algae from the lake, yes, that can also be used. We could kill two birds with one stone. That could be used to produce 30% of our state's annual ethanol production. There is hope here. The world isn't ending. It is not over yet. There is still time. There are efforts all over the world today in each state, in each country discussing and rallying for climate action. Just being here today, listening to each of our speeches and rallying for a better future, that is what we need. Thank you for being here and listening to the youth of today. Biden, Biden, you can't hide. Biden, Biden, you can't hide. You are funding genocide. You are funding genocide. Biden, Biden, can't you see? Biden, Biden, can't you see? Fossil fuels are killing me. Fossil fuels are killing me. Biden, Biden, can't you see? Biden, Biden, can't you see? Fossil fuels are killing me. Fossil fuels are killing me. Biden, Biden, you can't hide. Biden, Biden, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. We charge you with genocide. What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Now! What do we want? Justice.